Okay, welcome to this example. So in this example, we have uh, this particle P that I've drawn right here. And this particle P is subjected to two forces, force A and force B. Now, the magnitudes of both of these forces are given here. A is 35 newtons and B is 50 newtons. And excuse me, I should have drawn the magnitude sign like so. And the angle that A makes with this horizontal line, so there's this horizontal line right here. The angle that A makes below that line is this angle alpha. And the angle that B makes against that horizontal line is 25 degree. Now this question is asking, if the resultant of these two forces is to act directly to the left, in other words, the resultant force is going to act directly to the left, we need to find A, the angle alpha that A needs to make, and B, the magnitude of R. So there's uh, two different parts to this question, and there's already some known information. We know that this resultant vector, R, it's going to have some magnitude, which we don't know which magnitude it is yet, and that's going to be in newtons, but we already know its direction. It's going to act directly to the left. So if that is true, if R needs to act directly to the left, we need to figure out what this angle alpha is that this vector, this force vector A needs to make with that horizontal in order to ensure that this resultant force is acting to the left. So just like in the last example, I'm going to use some trigonometric laws to figure out what that angle alpha is. But first, we need to create a triangle. So we need to add A plus B, or we need to add B plus A. It doesn't matter which way you do them, but to make things a little bit easier to form the triangle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add B plus A. And so what that allows me to do is let me copy this diagram right here, and let me paste that right there. Now, what this allows me to do is I can take this vector A, and I can move it to the tip of B, and from this, if I kind of get rid of all these angles, you can see that the resultant force is going to act directly to the left. So it's going to start at P and it's going to end where A is. So this is the resultant force. And you can see that it is horizontal. So I've, I've drawn this triangle as accurately as I could. I know that the direction R is making is exactly to the left. And that allows us to find our answer a little bit more easily. So I'm just gonna fill out some information here, stuff that we already know. We know that the magnitude of A is 35 newtons, and we know the magnitude of B is 50 newtons. Now, if you look back to the original diagram, we have these angles here. So the angle that B makes with the horizontal is 25 degrees. So this angle right here is 25 degrees. And then for angle alpha, well, alpha is this angle right here, right between A and the horizontal. If this angle right here is alpha, then this angle right here is also alpha. So this angle right here is alpha. So I'm going to say that this is alpha. And the angle that these two vectors make when you add them together, I'll just call that beta for now. And we'll be able to use beta a little bit later to solve for the magnitude of R. But let's go ahead and do part A first. We need to figure out what this alpha angle is. Well, we could use the law of sines to do just that. So I'm going to use this angle alpha and this opposite side. And then I'll also use this angle 25 and its opposite side. So what I can write here is that the sine of alpha, the unknown angle that we're trying to find, the opposite side to alpha is vector b, which is 50 newtons. That's going to be equal to, well, sine of 25 degrees. And what's the opposite side to 25? Yep, it is this a vector right here, which we know the magnitude of, that's 35 newtons. So you can see that this equation only has one unknown, alpha. And if we just plug this in, and we solve for alpha, we get alpha is equal to about 37.14 degrees. So this angle right here is alpha, and that is our solution to part A. In other words, the angle that A needs to make with the horizontal to ensure that the resultant force vector is exactly horizontal and pointing to the left, 
that angle has to be about 37.14 degrees. So, awesome. We figured out part A. Let's go ahead and figure out part B. Part B is asking for the resultant magnitude of R. So how do we figure that out? Well, let's zoom into this triangle. And if we already figured out what this alpha angle is, and I'll go ahead and rewrite that here, that's 37.14 degrees. Well, we can use the sides of this triangle to figure out what R is. And I'm going to use the law of sines uh, once more, but this time I'm going to use this beta angle and this side R to figure out what R is. So in other words, I'm going to say that the sine of beta over its opposite side, which is the magnitude of R, that's equal to, well, now we can use whichever angle that we want. We could use this angle right here, which is 25, or the one that we calculated. Uh, to make things very, very clean, I'm just going to use 25 because it's a nice even number. Well, it's not even, it's odd, but you kind of know what I mean, right? It's, it's just a nice clean number. And I'm going to say that the sine of 25 degrees over its opposite side, which is this 35 newtons. So that's side A or vector A, and that is 35 newtons. So you'll see here that we actually have two unknowns in this equation. We have this angle beta and this resultant uh, magnitude R. So how do we figure out what this beta value is? Well, if we go back to this triangle and I'm gonna move this uh, side B out of the way, and I will say that, well, if you look at this point right here, where the tip of B meets the tail of A, if I were to draw a horizontal line there, just like this, we know that if this angle right here is 25 degrees and these two lines are parallel, then I know that this angle right here is 25 degrees. So I'm gonna draw that in 25 degrees. And the same thing for the other side, this angle right here, well, that's just going to be our alpha angle, this 37.14 degrees. So this is 37.14 degrees. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that beta is going to be equal to 180 degrees, right? Because it's a horizontal line. And that's going to be minus 25 degrees, minus 37.14 degrees. And if we do the math, beta is equal to about 117.86 degrees. Cool, so that gave us this beta value right here. Now if I rewrite this uh, equation down here, I have sine of 117.86 degrees divided by the magnitude of R, which I'll just say is regular R, and that's equal to sine of 25 degrees divided by 35 newtons. Now, if we just solve this uh, using our calculators, we get that the magnitude of this resultant vector R is equal to about 73.21 newtons. And this is acting exactly to the left. So there is our answer. Uh, resultant R is 73.21 newtons.